guys. Uh, today we are going to do a walk around of my 1985 Toyota 4Runner Meet Chief. Before her, I had a Paradise Blue Tacoma that I was absolutely in love with, but I was ready for a change. Sold it and kind of fell in love with the idea of being able to remove the top of these Forerunners. So I went on a big hunt, it took about six, seven months um, before I actually went and looked at Matthew's Forerunner. But his was a little bit too much for me. I am not a wheeler yet. Um, so I knew the very basics about trucks, um, so I politely passed on his offer. Uh, but then a couple, I think a month went by, and he sent me one that was in Campbell River and said, "If you don't buy this, I will." And I took that as a threat, and I grabbed my mom and her, and I went up to Campbell River and picked this up. <laughs> This is a true unicorn of the Toyota mini truck world. A factory solid axle, 22 RE, five speed. It's a 1985 Toyota 4Runner. It's one of the most sought after Toyota mini trucks nowadays and they're selling like $40,000 on auction right now. So this is uh, probably our best investment. I got her for 4,100 bucks, four grand. I uh, thought it was a smoking deal. Gave it a very brief look over when I was uh, doing the inspection was with my mom. I was kind of in that po at that point where I just wanted a vehicle and I really just didn't care. But she turnkey started, everything looked fine. So we drove her home and little did I know that I was gonna spend two years squeezing so much lemon juice out of this thing. This truck has a four inch suspension lift on 35, 12 and a half R15 mud terrains. We did a custom grill swap. This was a present to Stacy from myself. This was my art grill. It's used to hang uh, on my wall. And if you want to do this swap, it's uh, it's fairly simple. Once you can acquire the grill and the the logo, this is the best part because this this logo is so mint. Oftentimes they're they're cracked and rotten, but that was a really good one. Hence why it was on my wall. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I cut the, st I cut the stock grill uh, with, a, with a grinder really carefully, measured it a million times, and then uh, screwed them together. Also got her some LED headlights, which was a night and day from the candlesticks that uh, Toyota came with. But, but, that lemon juice tastes so sweet now. It's so worth it. Um, and it is how Matthew and I did start dating because I needed someone to fix all of the problems. Like when it was the middle of a winter so snowstorm and my windshield wipers didn't work. And that was our first date, <laughs> was Matthew putting my windshield wipers on. <laughs> and the snowball went from there. <laughs> so here I come along, this hotshot mechanic that thinks you know stuff about Toyotas. And this was a big undertaking. We've replaced almost everything in this thing. Uh, gas tank, fuel pump, clutch, all the brakes, a bunch of stuff under the hood, the starter. But the biggest thing we had to do was replace her frame. And I think the most appealing thing more recently has been the, the bumpers. Bumpers front and rear that we got from West Can Off-Road Design. Uh, super sick, we wanted something clean, low profile. And I think he absolutely nailed it. I love the look of these. So Jay's actually fairly stock underneath, but in really good way. She's still got the stock steering, stock transmission. She does have 437 diff gears. Another super cool custom thing about this truck is the chop top that we made for it. We get asked a lot about this, so this is how we did it. Chop top. We're always getting asked about it. This is it. 
I found an old Forerunner top, which is honestly the hardest part, but luckily the one we got had a broken window. So that worked out really well. Um, it's pretty freaking easy to make. All I did was the back windows are already broken. They're, they're easy to take out. You got to get in from the inside, um, take out the, there's a little trim. You got to take out a little trim on the inside. Uh, and then there's this really sticky glue and you honestly just have to get in there uh, with, I just used a couple flathead screwdrivers, one with a bend on the end and uh, just slowly pried all the way around and then peeled it out. It's pretty much the same thing for these windows. Uh, trim on the inside and then you just really carefully peel off the seal with a couple flathead screwdrivers. These ones were harder uh, than the back ones. Um, but yeah, honestly, just be careful if you do try and make one like this. And then, um, yeah, I just took an angle grinder. I literally just took an angle grinder and cut it in half and I left this little piece here uh, just to, I don't know, look a little different. I think it looks cool and it does provide a bit of shade. If anyone is sitting in the back, it's nothing too fancy. It was blue, we just spray painted it black and it just bolts right up to the factory uh, factory spots and it's way freaking lighter than, <laughs> than the other one. So we found out about Jade's frame issues by complete surprise when Stacy came down uh, for a birthday camping trip that I had planned. We loaded up a bunch of our friends in the back of the truck and started bombing down some logging roads to go explore this trail. Hit some big bumps and then things started to sound a little funny. Things sounded funny, but they also looked funny. I mean, I thought it was just me in my crazy eyes, but if you drove behind her, the entire back half was just sitting on an angle. And I remember asking Matthew, be like, is that normal? He's like, it's probably, it's probably just your eye, like you're just, you're not focusing. And I was like, yeah, that's normal. Uh, upon closer inspection, we re realized that uh, this entire uh, rear leaf hanger had completely ripped out of the frame. <laughs> and then to top it all off, uh, so we had to get towed all the way home, which was like a 300 kilometer tow. And then I took it to Fabsol, my buddy Will, and he uh, looked at it to basically tell us how bad it was. And we realized that the, excuse me, we, took it to Fabsol and we realized that the entire rear half of the frame was fiberglass. My favorite! Love this rear bumper that Jason at West Can did for us. I've always wanted a rear tire carry on my truck so I was super jealous when Stacy went and put this one on. It, oh, it looks amazing. I love the aluminum inserts. I just think it fits the body lines perfectly. Locks open, just looks good. So we went to the Yote Farmer um, around, it was probably like late afternoon, turned into a night mission. We chopped up an old frame that he had in his yard, took the back half, brought it home, lifted Jade up on two forklifts, the whole body up, cut her frame in half, put the brand new stuff together, Got it all welded by Spapsol, sandblasted, painted. It was so good looking. Um, but yeah, so now it's a brand new frame. I think one of my favorite things about this truck is that it's complete. It's got everything. It's got all the interior panels, like the tailgate's complete. And after years of effort, everything works. Got the wakeboard speakers, classic hipster move for a forerunner. Custom fitted sport mat floor so we can just leave her out in the rain and she's fine. <laughs> and this is her inside. Um, Matthew was generous enough to give me his old Yeti seats which are from a second gen forerunner. Super comfy, way better than what I had before that's for sure and they do kind of match the back seat which is nice. Um, everything's complete in here. I picked up 
the floor mats just off of Marketplace, which was kind of a steal. Yeah, so we did also redo the carpet because it was really bad. So she's got all brand new carpet. Everything else is very stock. The little console is there. Everything's kind of just baseline. Still have a sunroof, which is nice. Even though we don't use it because we have a roof rack there. It's still there. It's still nice. She's got all of her original kind of safety stuff, which is really cool. I kind of like having this on a truck. It makes you realize how old it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a super clean example of a 22 RE. This motor has always been spotless and probably one of our most reliable trucks, actually. It took us all the way to... Banff and back in the middle of winter when we got down to like minus 20 she started up no problem and it's been great especially considering this truck has almost half a million kilometers on it we did the exhaust so it's got a brand new header other than that it's been kept pretty stock which is great because it means it's reliable and it means that we know how to fix it so this is Jade uh, my future plans for her have kind of switched Originally, we were going to try and make her into kind of like a, a collectible, get all of the rust repair done, put collector's plates on it, and just kind of keep her stock and pretty. But then I bought Bo, which is my little two-wheel drive 83, and I put a lot of energy into making him kind of the clean version, <laughs> um, or like the clean model. So... Yeah, now I've decided that I really want a toy. I have never really wheeled much. The only wheeling I've done has been in her, and it's been very little amounts. Um, her shocks are not good. They are very base model, probably the original shocks. I want to put new shocks all the way around. I want lower gears, lockers. I have already purchased high steer, which is just sitting in the shed waiting to be put in so yeah I want to make her fun and wheel worthy I want to be able to take people in the back and show them really cool places because the Yeti I mean we can go everywhere but it's just us too if we can turn this into a wheeler as well now all of a sudden we can take the whole town which is kind of what I want to do <laughs> Oh, Mike. Okay, you're done.